In this last clip of our chapter on regeneration and healing, we'll finally get to what you hoped we would get to, and that are things which are more clinical than some of the basic uh, research that we talked about before. Uh, there's always the desire to understand the difference uh, between what they call healing by first intention from healing by second intention. And do you remember at the beginning we talked about the amount of fibrosis which occurs after uh, inflammation and with this uh, healing process now is determined by the degree of disruption or destruction of the intercellular matrix. You remember that? Well, that's the prime concept that differentiates healing by first intention from healing by second intention. When you heal by first intention, think of a tissue that has been very cleanly cut with a scalpel, like in surgery. Well, because there's very little disruption of the connective tissue, you can basically put the two ends back together, and when it heals, it winds up being pretty much exactly like it was before with minimal uh, scarring. If, for example, you had a wound uh, like a dog bite or somebody just gouged out tissue traumatically, uh, there's a significant disruption of the uh, uh, ECM, and therefore that is much more likely to heal with scarring. So the end result is in uh, first intention healing the edges of the wound are lined up. In second degree, a second intention wound healing, the edges are not lined up and therefore there's more granulation tissue, more neovascularization, more organizing inflammation, more epithelialization, and more fibrosis. End result is there's a lot more scarring with second intention wound healing than with first. Here's my favorite uh, diagram. Because we talked about things like inflammation, granulation, and fibrosis, like they were separate processes, I wouldn't want to give you the impression that they are. They are generally separate, but they overlap tremendously. So when we talked originally about inflammation, we would never have thought of the appearance of uh, blood vessels or scar tissue at the very beginning. But if you take the period of granulation or neovascularization, that can very much overlap both functionally as well as histologically with the uh, inflammatory process. And similarly, when we look at the ingrowth of new blood vessels and the appearance of uh, fibroblasts and collagen and scar formation, that overlaps with the granulation uh, phase as well, doesn't it? There is very little overlap, in fact, probably none, between classical acute inflammation and fibrosis. The uh, intermediate uh, curve, however, is your neovascularization phase. It would be inconceivable for fibroblasts to appear in inflammation uh, earlier than several days. And up here, they'll give you the uh, appearance of perhaps three at the very earliest, but more likely a few weeks, which is why if you see any process that has fibroblasts and scar and collagen in it, you know it is not recent. This is what granulation tissue is going to look like in your patients when you look at them after surgery. Uh, it's nice and puffy and pink and red because uh, and it may even contain a little bit of uh, yellowish type material, which is fibrin, but don't get that confused with pus. This is not an infected wound. This is a clean wound. And this is a clean wound also. It's puffy because of the granulation, or what the uh, resident might call ticking, meaning, um, what does the word ticking mean? Uh, actually, I don't know. But often, I've heard that term used before, all it means is healthy granulation tissue. And microscopically, you may still have some remnant of inflammatory cells. You ha will have a predominant vascular pattern. There's a blood vessel, there is, there is, there is, there is. Some of these other cells may be primitive endothelial cells, connective tissue cells, which will give rise to blood vessels. But you don't see much uh, fibrosis in here, do you? 
Fibrosis occurs later than granulation. And not only does it occur later, by that I mean weeks, months, even years, but as time goes on, the collagen uh, becomes more dense, has more tensile strength, and therefore the tissue is stronger. So can we perhaps say that uh, uh, that uh, which doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Is this the histologic example of it? Perhaps. Let's get s very clinical again and talk about what kind of things are going to retard healing. Well, there are both local factors and there are also systemic factors. The local factors and systemic factors both have as their number one factor blood supply. And even though we're going to talk about a few other things, the main, main, main process in healing is blood supply. Locally, if something is not uh, innervated correctly, even if it's not a muscle, it's not going to heal as well as something that is. If there's still persistence of a local infection or the presence of a foreign body or a big blood clot perhaps causing uh, inadequate, uh, uh, causing too much pressure and inadequate blood flow, that would be another reason for uh, a local retarding factor. If there's mechanical stress, perhaps from a cast that's not on right, or the presence of necrotic tissue in itself, even if it is not infected, will also be a local retarding factor. But remember, folks, if you get to be 80 and you get Alzheimer's disease and you can only think of one thing for both local and systemic, adequate blood supply is the number one uh, factor. So here we go to the systemic factors. And do older people not heal as well as younger people? Yeah. Do people who don't have enough oxygen going to tissues and wounds and areas of inflammation not heal as well as non-anemic people? Yeah. Do people with malignancies, perhaps due to some immune deficiency or not, uh, not heal as well? Yes. Do malnourished people not heal as well? These are all logical, aren't they? Do obese people not heal as well as non-obese people? You betcha. And do uh, people that still have the presence of systemic infection not heal as well? Yes. Do people with major organ failure of any major organ, kidney, liver, anything, not heal as well? Yes. But once again, decreased blood supply is also the number one uh, reason for a a retarding factor uh, systemically. And thank you very much. We are completely done with chapter three.